Hi, welcome to a brand new episode of Shades of Us. I am Ramat and today I want to talk about uh, something I have titled Dear Parents, here are some tips on raising your children. It's a mouthful but it's something I need to talk about. So I will talk about it from a point of view, from my point of view uh, and, and see what you think about it at the end of this. I have decided that when I am 35, I would have my babies. Um, so I not so sure about marriage but i'm always sure about wanting kids so when i'm 35 i'll begin to have my babies hopefully have one girl and twin boys that's always what i've wanted um all my life so that's what i'm thinking of and i always think about the world i want to bring these children into and what tips i want to learn from the experiences i had with my own parents from what i've seen with other parents i want to see how i want to raise my kids i for me there are a couple of things that I think are necessary for me to do. The first is that my kids will see me as their first role model. And so whatever I do is usually what they may replicate. So it's important for me that I have my own life figured out, which is why I'm waiting until I'm 35 and would have lived a little bit and have figured out a bit of my life. So I look at uh, what I want my kids to have and, and believe in. I believe in the equality of the sexes. I believe in, you know, human rights. I believe in promoting rights for people. I believe in advancing the rights of women and children. And I believe in protecting the people in society who are most underserved. Women, children, people living with disabilities, people who have um, different sexual orientations and uh, orientation than is the norm and things like that. So that is what my life's work and goal is about. So I believe in that and I live for that. I want my children to be able to see that aspect of me and to also believe in sex the sexes, to be sensitive, to treat people right, to um, as much as possible contributes to the improvement of the world so that every all of us can live together well that is what i i look for but then i realize it's not just about saying it uh, my children will see what i do and will most likely replicate it it's like me um, cooking beans a certain kind of way or cooking soups a certain kind of way because that's how i saw my mother do it and as much as um, my mom will never admit to being a feminist, that I learned feminism from watching her and, and watching her take care of us. So um, it's the same way. I think children across board see their parents and they replicate. They do things almost the same way that their parents do it. Or they decide that, no, this is not for me, and then they do things in the opposite direction. So your role model either way. So it's either that this is what I want to be, or this is what I don't want to be. You're the first role model that they get before they even go to school and all of that. So um, I want to leave a legacy where my children are able to be sensitive, be caring, um, think about the issues that affect us, not just us as individuals, but as a community, as black people, Africans, and as women. And, you know, all of us who have one issue or the other, that my children are empathic enough for that. And I want to see that happen. Another thing I know is of great importance is that parents are um, the first people who build their children's self-worth. Parents are big here uh, on insults and their own praise and so their children suffer. You hear things like big head, stubborn, stubborn boy, these things like that, stupid and things like that. I don't want to raise my kids like that. So I have a propensity to be angry, to, to, to lash out, but I'm trying to contain it so that I never have to tell my child that you're stupid. In fact, I try not to tell people they're stupid. It's hard sometimes, you know, they, you see certain people and you want to say, but then I never want to tell anyone that they're stupid or that they because it affects their self-worth, especially for children. If you hear things a lot, that it, it begins to affect their self-worth. I've seen children who have been told, oh, see your big head, and they continue to, you know, they, they, they become very self-conscious, or, you know, someone says something about their skin, their weight, their intelligence, and all of that, and they become withdrawn. So I don't want a situation where that is what I do. I want to be able to praise as much as possible, tell them, oh, you're doing well, that this is good, I love what you did, and things like that. And then when they do wrong, not to say things like you're stupid or you're this, no, but to say, okay, I didn't like what you did. Um, I think you should have done better. You can express your displeasure, be unhappy with your child, yes, but not in a way that crushes their spirit. 
right that's what i want to be able to um, give to my children i genuinely believe that children should not earn your love like we have seen a lot of parents who think that their children have to earn their love they have to do chores they have to do this they have to do that and then when they're adults you have to bring money and they're constantly keeping their love away and preventing their children from enjoying that part of them and so their children are constantly trying to do things to please them because they think that's the only way to get love it is wrong you should love your children unconditionally even if your children are horrible people you should love them unconditionally it doesn't mean that you cannot correct them or you cannot be unhappy with them or you cannot um, be sad about things they have done but that if they are your children you should love them unconditionally they should not have to earn your love it is just completely wrong and to have children think that they need to earn your love oh it will break their spirits. I've seen that firsthand. I've seen children bend up over backwards trying to please their parents. And then they were doing things they were not happy about, things they didn't want to do just because they wanted to get that slight smile, that nod of appreciation, that, that um, praise from their parents. And some of them never even get it. So they go through life as on, they're not whole adults. And so it affects their relationships because they're either constantly seeking um, approval or seeking validation from people outside. Nah, I think you should teach your children to, that you love them. You should, teach, you should teach your children love of themselves because you have shown them that you love them. So I don't think children should ever need to earn their parents' love. And similarly, I think that um, your children should respect you and not fear you. In a lot of our African homes, Nigerian homes, we have parents who, as soon as you hear the car outside that they are coming home, children would run to their room. I used to do that a lot in the past um, uh, with my dad. We had a back and forth kind of relationship. As soon as I heard his car coming, I would just run into the bedroom and I would be there until I would come out and say, oh, daddy, you're welcome, and then go back inside. And that was the kind of relationship we had. And, and there are lots of children who are like that, who are scared of their parents. They are literally shaking like leaves with their parents. Some, some children cannot even have conversations with their parents because they are so afraid of them and things like that. And then parents wonder, oh, when these people become adults and want nothing to do with them they're like oh why is my child refusing to to interact with me or be but i mean you set a relationship where fear thrives and where fear thrives people cannot blossom there and so your children will not want to come around you and things like that so yeah um it is important that your children respect you and i have seen a family goodness the conversations that they had you could tell it was coming from a place of respect they would respectfully disagree they will talk about things and sometimes the kids will yell at the parents and i'm like ah, you're about to get beat but then you know they'll come back and i'm, I'm sorry that i yelled at you and um, I was I was pissed off and, and I shouldn't have taken it out on you. And Pierre would be like, I understand your view. And I'm like, <gasps> what? So there, there are situations where if you teach your children to respect you, even if they do step out of boundaries and they act crazy, they, they'll always come back and know that, okay, this thing I did was wrong. And they, they can come and apologize. But if your children learn to fear you, they wouldn't even talk. If you, Whatever you say is what goes. Whatever I say, yes, daddy, yes, mommy, yes, sir, yes, ma. And that's what it is. And then these children, they'll be doing things that are completely different from what you expect. And then, you know, you just don't have a relationship with them. I think one thing that needs to be mentioned is that children are not an extension of their parents. I think it is the biggest lesson for me. That's the biggest thing I want to leave with my children. That from as early as prob probably two years old, I'll start telling them, you're not an extension of me. You are your own person. You're whole. You're complete. You're all by yourself a full human being. You have your own decisions. You have your own plans for your future. You have your own aspirations. You would have your own future that is completely separate from me. I learned this recently. Um, I was reading a book. I can't remember the name of the book for the life of me, but it was really good. It talked about how children were completely different. And I, I, I resonated with it so well because I realized that a lot of our parents try to raise us as an extension of themselves. It's why when you do something, they tell you, oh, you brought disgrace to the family, as opposed to handling the situation. So 
there should be a, situ a realization that this, this is a full person all by themselves. They don't even need to take your name. I know people will kill me, but I would probably raise my kids and say, you don't have to take my name. If you choose whatever name you want to choose, that's your business. You know, you are your own person and you are complete and you're whole. That's what I want to teach my children. Um, I think if as parents we realize that um, we our children are not extensions of us, we'll be better parents, I feel, because you realize that this is a person. If they make a decision, it's because... They, uh, because of the, the, what do you call it, the choices they had in that moment. It will make you more understanding, more empathic, and would help you build your relationship better with your child. I know it sounds idealistic, and it sounds this way because I don't have kids yet, and people may bring that up, but I genuinely believe that this is it. And most importantly, I think parents should tell their children that they love them. Now, it's hard for me to even tell anyone, my siblings, my friends, and all of them that I love them. But I am trying to learn it and say, okay, once in a while I say, oh, I love you. Oh, love you. I start with love you so that it doesn't sound so crazy. But it's something I want to be able to do with my kids, to be able to tell them constantly that I love them so that they do not seek a love or validation outside. Because a lot of people who have never heard this don't even know how to process hearing I love you. They just think, oh, a man tells you I love you. Oh, he must love me. And so they, they want to have sex and then they want to let go of their lives. Or a woman tells me I love you and oh, I must be on the top of the world or something. No. Once your parents begin and start by telling you that they love you, it just makes your life so much more easier and then makes your relationship with your child great. So much so that once you correct them, they know that you're correcting them out of love. Once you train them, they know it's because you love them, not because of duty. Because we know that, yes, it's duty that a lot of people look at. But then love in itself, telling them, I love you. You are my child and I love you. You pissed me off, I love you. I, I want to flog you, but I love you. You know, all those kinds of things. It really builds on the confidence of children. To wrap up, I would say that if you use all of these tips and, and take care of your child, um, I think that you have a great relationship with said child um, in the future. When they become adults of their own, they wouldn't want to cut you off or stay away from you. They would actually have a good relationship with you because you have raised them as a person that you love and they would love you in return. It's not always the case. It's not 100% foolproof or guaranteed, but there's a bigger chance that you'd have a great relationship with your child if you treat them with the respect dignity and love that they deserve i hope parents can take some tips from this and treat their ch children well and raise them well and raise them not as an extension of themselves but people whom they love and respect and it, trust me it will bounce back um to you in a good way i can't wait till i have babies to see if i'm going to hold this um thing to my heart but i i really hope i can raise my children like that I'd like to hear what you think about this thing I have just talked about in this last few minutes. Um, use the comment section to talk about it. Share your ideas. I'd like to hear from you. And I hope you listen to the end of this vlog to find out different ways that you can reach me. Because I am across social media and there are different ways that you can reach me. Thank you for being a part of today's show and I hope you have a great, great day. It's hugs and kisses from Ramat. Bye. -ya.